so a little more than a minute has gone by. I've waited until I saw some movement here with the oregano leaves. I'll show you what's going on. Maybe you're starting to see some movement too in your experiment at home. I see the most movement by looking above and down. So observe yours in that way by looking above and down. Where is the oil moving the fastest? Where is the oil moving the slowest? Do you notice any kind of pattern? Is it symmetrical? Remember that word from our art lesson? Meaning it looks the same on both sides. Now look at yours to the side, like we're looking at mine here. Is the movement going upward? Where do you see movement of the oil going up? Do you see any movement going downward? Where do you see it going down? Is there a pattern looking at it from the side? And is that pattern symmetrical? Now, pay attention to the area that's nearest to the candle. How would you describe that movement? What about the areas that are further away from the candle? How would you describe that movement? Well, what you're probably seeing is the oil above the candle is moving up and you can see that because of the flakes and then it's parting out to the side in a symmetrical pattern. Then as it travels further away from the candle, it starts to sink and be drawn back in. All the while more oil that's now right above the candle is moving up and it keeps circulating like that. Well, did you know that this actually happens on our earth, in our oceans? There are parts of our earth and our oceans that are warmer than other parts. You've probably wondered and thought about that already. How the areas where we live and even a little bit south around the equator are very, very warm. But as you go further north, closer to the North Pole, it gets cold. And as you go further south, closer to the South Pole, it also gets cold. But around that equator, it gets really warm, just like where this candle is. So imagine our equator where rays of the perpendicular sun, if you've had those lessons, are heating up the equator, the air, the land, and the water that is in the equator or on top of the equator. As the water in the ocean heats up in that area, it becomes less dense. 
which is another way of saying it becomes lighter. Whenever heat is applied to a liquid, it becomes less dense. Maybe you've even had that lesson on viscosity. I mean, watched how the oil and water and honey went down the glass plane. And then we heated up those different materials and we saw that they went faster. They became more fluid. Well, that's what's happening here. The oil that's getting warmed up by that candle or by the sun in the ocean is becoming more fluid. And we know that as things are less dense or they're lighter, they float to the top. And we know that heavy things always sink to the bottom. You remember that from the first great story as the earth was settling. Well, that's what's happening here. So as the ocean water is warming up from the sun, it floats up to the top and then out. And as it's going out, it's further away from the candle or from where the sun's perpendicular rays are hitting the earth and it starts to cool off. And so as it cools, it becomes more dense again and it gets heavy and it falls to the bottom. All the while, more of the ocean keeps getting warmed up, becoming lighter and moving out to the sides so that there becomes this cycle of ocean water warming up, moving out to the side, cooling down and dropping, then being drawn in right here, right where the sun's perpendicular rays are hitting the most. This is a special current in our oceans called the convection current. And when it applies to our oceans, it's called the conveyor belt current. Isn't that interesting? You know how in the grocery store, you put your groceries on the black part that moves as it goes to the register? Imagine that happening here and in our oceans, all of that water getting moved around from the bottom to the top, outwards, and then back again. What a magnificent world we live on, full of different processes. Maybe you would like to do some research on currents. There are special currents that have even their own names all over our oceans. There's one called the Gulf Stream. Maybe you've heard of that one. Lots of people who boat use the Gulf Stream and it's nearby where we live. What other currents can you find? I can't wait to hear about your research.